Hello, this is the third video in this series on the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign Ghosts of Salt Marsh. In my previous video I explained some of the ways that I organized the campaign and in this video I'm going to go through all of the cool resources that I found that you might want to include in your adventure. First up is Saltmarsh Notice Boards, which includes a bunch of different adventures that you could do, some side missions or just uh, some odd jobs that people could do uh, as downtime activities. It includes uh, a bunch of PDF boards that you could use to uh, present to your players, as well as some blank ones that you can use to create your own. So this is something that you could use either in a Ghost of Saltmarsh campaign or a similar nautical adventure. As well, the uh, templates you could use could be used to create any kind of notice board in any kind of your game. In my uh, campaign, I set this up as a job board in front of the Who Watch Tower and presented the different ideas whenever people were looking for, uh, whenever my players were looking for different odd jobs uh, to get started. Next we have the Secrets of Skyhorn Lighthouse. Rumors of a rampaging sea monster have ground shipping traffic to a halt in the harbour. The characters discover that the Jade Lion has gone missing near Skyhorn Lighthouse and learn they must brave the open seas and cutthroat enemies in order to save the crew from a murky fate. This adventure is planned for 5th level characters, so not something you want to introduce early in your campaign, but later as the players level up, definitely something that you can include. Uh, the adventure includes a number of locations as well as new monsters and NPCs that you could use uh, as part of this adventure or somewhere else within your campaign. The adventure is based around Eel Folk, which I replaced with Sahagan uh, to help build up the idea of the threat of the Sahagan in the area, as well as make it a little bit more themed towards the Ghost of Saltmarsh campaign. If you're looking for uh, NPC names, places, shops, different locations uh, to include as part of your Saltmarsh campaign, the Saltmarsh People, Places and Shops guide is definitely a uh, great resource to help you populate the area and uh, give you some ideas. Even some of the names or some of the descriptions can be useful uh, when describing different NPCs throughout Saltmarsh. The Ghost of Saltmarsh book includes some backgrounds that your players may choose to use when creating their characters. But the Heroes of Saltmarsh, martial archetypes for 5th edition, includes six maritime martial archetypes that your players could choose to use, which are very uh, themed towards the Ghost of Salt Marsh or a maritime nautical type adventure. So if your players are looking for that, uh, you know, Blackbeard or Jack Sparrow type character, this is a great resource to be able to provide to them. Next we have extra ship upgrades, which includes 20 ship upgrades that you can add to your campaign. So once your players have a ship, whether they bought it or acquired it through other means, uh, if you have players that are looking to upgrade their ship or, or improve it, do some special cool things, this is a great resource to be able to give options uh, that they can do and uh, I found this really useful if that's something your players are looking for. The next resource is 50 Magic Items, Treasures of Salt Marsh which includes 50 magic items that you could use to either replace different parts in the Ghost of Salt Marsh adventures, add to uh, side quests or different adventures that you want to do, anything uh, maritime themed or uh, whatnot, this is definitely a great resource for that. If you're going to be running any kind of nautical campaign where ships are going to be involved, the Nautical Adventures uh, book is definitely a essential resource I would highly recommend. It includes a number of stats for a variety of different ships and upgrades, which uh, expands what is in the Ghost of Saltmarsh campaign uh, book, as well as includes uh, rules and information uh, to allow you to do ship-to-ship -ship combat. One of the big criticisms of the Ghost of Saltmarsh book was that um, a lot of people were expecting to be able to uh, play out a lot of their fantasy adventures uh, from movies and other uh, things that they've seen uh, and that information was provided in the campaign book. Uh, this resource, which you can get for free actually, uh, definitely is what people were looking for when it comes to ship-to-ship -ship combat and actually using ships uh, as part of your campaign. The next resource 
festivals, feasts, and fairs is not specific to salt marsh or any kind of maritime nautical adventure, but serves as a great resource to be able to add some flair and some livelihood and whatnot to this salt marsh uh, and the region. Uh, check it out. There's lots of really cool carnival games and different activities, some backgrounds, some magic items, whatnot that uh, you might be able to include uh, in your adventure while people are going around the region. The Tavern Games resource as well is not specific to any kind of salt marsh or nautical adventures but inevitably your players are going to head to some sort of a tavern or want to play some games aboard their ship uh, and this resource uh, really gives a lot of great ideas uh, that your players can do uh, to maybe earn some money or um, get into some trouble uh, at uh, your local tavern. In addition to the resources that I've already mentioned, I also had a number of different books and uh, adventures that I wanted to try to include in the Ghost of Salt Marsh campaign. Uh, the first of which is uh, some of the resources from the Game Master's book of Random Encounters uh, here. Uh, I specifically uh, wanted to run the Waterwise Water Rise Cavern, uh, which was a fun little side quest uh, that uh, they could do, which includes uh, running some rapids uh, and a falls that goes up instead of coming down, as well as a uh, secret behind the waterfall uh, that uh, they could uh, explore. The next book was the um, Sly Furish's Fantastic Adventures. So I ran through here and one of the ones that I found interesting was the Dwarven Vault Adventure uh, with having the Dwarven Mine being a, pop, a part of the Salt Marsh region and uh, the adventure. Uh, this uh, seemed like a really interesting thing to uh, include as an optional event. So I had skipped uh, right to when they actually were entering the mine, um, which uh, I tied into the existing stuff within the Salt Marsh adventure and some of the plot hooks and things like that. My players did this early on in the campaign when they were still a level one, so this adventure was uh, way too difficult for them. So what I actually did was I had them be part of a party, uh, and they were just hired uh, to go uh, help with this adventure. If they uh, were creative and um, they played well, they actually might have been able to come out with some really cool um, loot and uh, treasures as part of this adventure as well too. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, that was really fun. Um, there was also a number of uh, different things that I wanted to include in the random, uh, the book of random tables here, uh, which had some different themed based on the different uh, things like whether it's in a uh, swampy area or a coastal area. Um, there were some there were some interesting uh, things that I wanted to include in that as well too. In my next video I'm going to talk about some of the resources that I put together for my players as well as our session zero and how we started in our campaign.